Dr. Lori Roth. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. That's uh, better than some people in talk radio say. Uh, last year when I was shredding the health care bill on air, some of you really like that forced RFID chips in your body coming. How many are going to get forced RFID chips just to be nice and patriotic? If you do, I'll have to hurt you right now. We don't do forced RFID chips. But I had this guy call me, and he was saying, I could tell a name was coming, and he said, well, Dr. Roth, we all know who you really are. And I leaned into my microphone, and I said, well, who am I? He said, we all know you're the Antichrist. I, I, <laughs> I really didn't expect that. All I could think to say was, that's Dr. Antichrist to you. <laughs> okay. Talk radio has been what I've done for 11 years, three hours a day. I've talked on a lot of issues. I've published a couple articles a week for 10 years. You may have read some of my articles, uh, newmediajournal.us, Canada Free Press, newswithviews.com, uh, Renew America, Gulag Bound, TeaParty.org. A, a, a lot of journals pick up my stuff after all this time. Um, so I, I very much care about the issues of America. I'm a mom. Uh, my husband and I foster adopted both our kids, Wayne and Mo, from not nice homes a long time ago. And uh, so I have real concerns about speaking the truth about child care, about kids, about life. I've always been pro-life. Never started out pro-choice and then magically morphed into pro-life. No, I've always been uh, caring about life, uh, very much so. And uh, my kids could have easily been aborted. They came out of very, very difficult criminal drug situations. And um, they're doing great now. Uh, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. Um, I'm not shy about that on my national secular radio show, nor any of my articles, nor my book that's out, The People's President. Um, a year ago, uh, I was talking to one of my guests on air, and we were talking about how to beat Obama and uh, get our country back on the right track. And I... Uh, it just came out of my mouth, out of nowhere. Well, do you think any, a normal person could run like me that's not a politician, millionaire, or lawyer? And, he, and we started talking, and that's where the seed was planted in my heart. I'd never run for an office in my life. I was in the Republican Party my whole life and vice chair of the Republican Party for a while until I resigned because I was running as an independent. Um, but I felt the call of the Lord back a year ago, and I started thinking about it. And it sh surprised even me. And um, I realized I'd had quite a lot of ideas emerge over 10 years in talk radio, and I'd written about a lot of them. And one of the ideas I've had for some time that I'm passionate about now, that I think the country needs. We talk about all the money we need to get out of debt and cut back. We need to audit our departments. That's common sense anyway. We need to audit some and get rid of all the ones that are extra garbage and baggage and just protecting careers of politicians. We all know that's ridiculous. Okay. That needs to happen. But we do need money. We have Social Security. We have Medicare, Medicaid chips. We have military. We have transportation. We have a lot of bills that add up, even after we do all the cleaning and all the auditing and getting rid of the fluff. We still have bills, okay? We may want to privatize Social Security with the younger crowd, but you don't screw the uh, older crowd and suddenly pretend like they don't have it coming when they've been forced to pay into it for decades. Hello. So all this nonsense about Johnson putting it in the general fund decades ago, that's stealing. I don't know how come people all these years haven't been arrested for stealing from Social Security or Medicare. I really don't. I really honestly don't. So my plan that I've been passionate about well before I even thought of, of running for anything was um, to put forth a bill and get it passed, a 2% point of purchase tax. I did some research in a lot of sources, and if you consider all government transactions, all of them, including Wall Street, you're talking $900 trillion, nearly a quadrillion, with a T. Okay. All right. Think about it. 2% point of purchase and eradication of all tax, income tax, bye-bye. Capital gains, excise, payroll, gone. 
all of it gone. People get their money back, their gross back. You don't steal and redistribute the profit of the business. Think about that as far as the stimulation on the economy. 2% of 900 trillion is 18 trillion. Now, let's just say 10 to 20 trillion a year is coming in. Now it gets exciting. Now the Social Security can be up where it should be. In fact, increase it because we have more baby boomers and people retiring, don't we? We don't screw people now. You don't have to chase money. You set that aside. You figure out the real budget and you set it aside from that money that comes in. When you buy a watermelon, you pay 2%. You buy a car, you pay 2%. You buy a stock package, you pay 2%. You don't exempt anyone. But you don't tax their income. You don't tax business. You don't rape America anymore. But yet, beautifully, you're getting in more money. You're getting out of debt. You take over half that money coming in and chunk down your debt. We'd be out of debt in the first four years, completely, down to zero. We would have a secure Social Security for the first time. We'd have secure Medicare made Medicaid chips. This trillion that Obama's cutting out of the military, shame on him. I am not for illegal wars. I'd pull us out of Ill Libya. That's ridiculous to be there. That does breach the 1973 War Powers Act. But I, I would absolutely put the trillion back in the military. I think it's critical for protection, for a president to protect America. And that is with big, healthy, funded military. I believe like Ronald Reagan does, not like Ron Paul. Isolationism, no. I'm not an isolationist. I'm not a warmonger. But Ronald Reagan wasn't. The Russian Empire crumbled. The Berlin Wall came down. The hostage crisis in Iran stopped within hours of his inauguration. Not with Jimmy Carter barking his little orders. Didn't work because they didn't respect his authority and his power. They respected Ronald Reagan. So my passion is the 2% point of purchase tax and the economic world and, and so many worlds because it will stabilize, it will fund, it will get us out of debt, it will liberate America from tax oppression and tax hell quickly. And that is good for business. Uh, as far as some of the other things, uh, chapter three in my book, Energy Independence. My passion is for the next, for the first um, four years is to bring all energy heads of all the industry in energy, oil, natural gas. We have the largest natural gas reserves in the world. Why don't we have enough infrastructure? Can someone tell me that? That's ridiculous. Shame on the Department of Energy and any leadership in the White House for not having us export energy. We should be the number one exporter of energy in the world. We have oil. We have natural gas. We have nuclear. We haven't built nuclear since the 70s and oil since the 70s because of the unholy trinity, as I call it, regulation, taxation, litigation. I've been screaming about it and writing about it on my show for years. Regulation is destroying energy. Obama is closing down coal plants. He said it before he was elected, and that's doing, he's doing exactly that, closing down coal plants, putting fierce regulations to power plants. He wants to destroy our achievement, our exceptionalism, our forward momentum with energy. We're to, we're to be dependent on the international world. And Susan, you were talking about sovereignty and stuff. Uh, he has no concept of sovereignty. No concept at all of sovereignty. He wants us to submit and bow down to the UN. International global elitist forces over my dead body, if I'm president. Uh, I don't even know why we're in the UN anymore. I would take us out of the UN. I would disconnect us from, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you talk about waste of money. Honey, while they outvote us, give us a speech on Islam and, and bludgeon Israel, our best ally in the Middle East. No, I'm for standing for Israel, standing for Taiwan, standing for freedom, and telling the UN to have a nice day. And as far as foreign policy, I've said it in the articles, and I'm not going to hide from it or backpedal at all. I'm for calling the heads of all 57 Muslim countries who want to have a caliphate and push Sharia law down the world's throat, and you've seen what's happened with the uh, Arab Spring. It's real, folks. It is not just a Bush scheme. It is very dangerous and very deadly. I would call all of the Muslim countries myself, and I would say the next 9-11 attack on America means the immediate classification of Mecca and Medina. Immediately. Um, I, uh, uh, hit him in the heart. Hit him in the heart. 
Um, let them know in advance. To me, that is ethical and compassionate and American. Let them know the cost in advance. I don't want war. I'm not going to go to the UN. I'm not going to call mommy or my therapist. I'm not going to call my show. I'm not going to look northward. I'm going to blow up Mecca and Medina if you ever attack us again. If we track it back to you at all. And, and, that, and I'm, I'm going to say, here's an incentive. You pull in the Taliban and Hamas and Hezbollah and Al-Aqsa Martyrs and Al-Qaeda or whatever the heck you call them. They call, you call them all kinds of things. I don't even care what you call them. Pull in your radicals. Pull in the jihad crowd. The people that want to call us all infidels and control the world with your agenda. It ain't going to happen. We're the United States of America. We need to be strong. We need to have a strong military. We need the 2% point of purchase tax to get us out of debt and stop talking about it. I'm passionate about border security. 200 billion a year drug trade comes across every year. We need to stop talking about that and put virtual fence where appropriate, real fences, triple border security. I'd put National Guard on the troops. I talk about border stuff all the time on my show because it's critical to our infrastructure, our jobs, our history. We see states nearly going bankrupt because of it. We see criminals, mystery people, God knows what terrorist weapons are coming across the border, let alone drugs. We have to stop it. Then we can do what is compassionate, responsible, and honorable and legal with the millions of illegals that are here. We're not Nazi Germany. We don't treat people like cattle. Um, I would find ways utilizing the expertise of Al Garza, former head of the Minutemen, who's one of my endorsers, uh, Jim Gilchrist, who's one of my endorsers, who was the founder of the Minutemen. I talk with those people all the time. And we will get it done. We will deal with the border and stop the hemorrhaging and then deal in a compassionate and honorable and systematic way with the people that are here. And I have a heart, too. I care about the people that are here, but I'm not going to be codependent. I'm not going to give blanket amnesty like the Republicans play games with and the Democrats play games with to manipulate a voting bloc. No, no, no. That's not going to help America either. Borders need to be secure. We need the best military on earth. We need tax relief for real, not a dip, not an increase. No, we need a revolution with taxes so that we can get out of debt. We need to audit all governments, uh, uh, departments in our government, in which I would do. And uh, probably in talking with Congress a few times, I'm sorry, I, it's my style, and I'd probably have to tell them to kiss my grits a few times, and I probably would. I'm sorry, as your president, <laughs> that's the way I talk, I don't know how to talk political. Uh, I am what I am. Um, I'm a survivor. Uh, where do I look for my time? Am I, where, where oh, do I? Am I all right? Okay, because I, I thought I'm probably ignoring someone who's telling me to shut up. <coughs> I didn't even know where I was supposed to look. Um, two minutes left? Okay, all right. Well, um, one of the things that impacted my life, other than the Lord and his saving grace, which is my core inspiration in my life, it is. Um, I was nearly killed. Um, back in August 25th, 2005, when a deer hit me on my motorcycle, and some of you heard about that, and it hit national news. And uh, there's a movie, actually a documentary right now, being made on my life. I have to fly to New York after the National Convention to do an interview. Um, Dr. James Manning, out of Outland, New York, is doing a documentary on my life. He has me on his show every week, and he's in endorsed me in my candidacy. So he wants me on his week, uh, show every week. And so that... That is going to get louder, the whole story of my comeback. I was nearly killed. I was two minutes from death when a deer hit me and I crashed on my face. Everything you're looking at was shattered. My forehead, my eye socket, my, both my jaws, my mandible, part of my neck. Uh, my brain was slammed against my skull. I was in a coma for weeks. It could not have been more dramatic and gross. Drooling, looked like Frankenstein, really is helpful for your life. Um, it, uh, and I recovered and I started my show 10 months later. And I fought like I've never fought before. We had no health insurance. And it was a $500,000 accident, half a million dollar accident. Um, I had a two and a nine year old. Two and a nine year old, and that was our only income when it was hit because Rich was uh, working at home because we had needy foster adopt kids. And so we decided to work and we only brought in 2,500 a month or something. We were never rich with the show because of all the bills. So when we lost our only income with no health insurance and I was in a coma, 
which got me on Medicaid, and that saved us from going bankrupt, and we built it back. And they had a rule. You can only get a job with minimum wage, Rich, uh, while his wife was in the hospital in a coma. So he went out and got minimum wage. Done? Anyway, I'm back. If I, as roadkill, can come back, and America is roadkill, I think I'm the one to bring her back. Thanks so much.